of David Sarnoff's like RCA heads, and I play a few other stand-ins. Yeah. So. Wow. Uh, how does it affect the the chemistry of the cast having to play all these different roles? It's a really great acting challenge because there's one girl in the show. Her name's Jandria. She plays nine different characters. So when you have to think about how do all these people behave differently? How do they walk differently? Think differently? Speak differently? It's <laughs> It's taking the challenge of acting and just multiplying it by like five or six, depending on you know how many characters you play. Uh, it seems like a lot to keep straight. Yeah. Uh, how was the public's reaction to your opening weekend? You know, they really liked it. I was kind of worried because a very vast majority of this play is uh, it's just information. You know, what happens is Philo Farnsworth and David Sarnoff they will narrate to the audience a lot of information of uh, like crucial points in history leading to the invention of television and then there will be people in a scene and they'll act it out and then they'll set up another one so but because of Aaron Sorkin's writing and it's just so brilliant people were saying some people were saying it's their favorite show they've seen here so far Wow. Um, and yeah, Aaron Sorkin is a great writer. I really love The West Wing. And uh, didn't he just do The, the Social Network? The Social yeah. Network. Yeah, that movie did really well in the box office this year. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that this play has some indoor fireworks. What was it like working with indoor pyrotechnics? <laughs> well, uh, it's kind of exciting because you don't really know for sure what's going to happen. Because although they are controlled, relatively speaking, it's, should something bad actually happen, it, it's you got to think on your feet and think fast <laughs> and it, not knowing exactly what's going to happen every time is a little exciting but scary at the same time <laughs> that's cool that's really cool um so when does the show play next we well actually it plays next tonight at uh, 7 30 and it also plays friday through sunday of this weekend okay um great so what other plays are coming up uh in uwl cedar department our next show is called from up here it is a play about a senior high schooler who brings an unloaded gun and a list of names to his high school oh. and he then gets suspended but where the play picks up is after he starts school again so it kind of takes a look at what happens to those involved in his life like his family and his classmates and how that all changes and a big point of the play that it follows is he has to write a letter of apology to his students and his classmates and his teachers so and then we all just had auditions for the holiday show which is called Shakespeare in Hollywood oh, yeah. um, if you're familiar with Shakespeare's play a Midsummer Night's Dream it takes two of those fairies and it's just a bunch of wacky events unfold and it's a lot of fun Interesting. So will those be uh, coming up this year then? Mm-hmm. From up here, uh, should be in November, I think early November. And then Shakespeare in Hollywood will be the, uh, the holiday time slot, which is early December. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds great. Um, so are there any specific acting challenges that you think that you may encounter uh, playing all of these different roles throughout the year? Say you are in the play about the school shooting versus the fairy tale type play of yeah. Midsummer's Night Dream. Well, a lot of these plays have very different acting styles, whereas if you look at the Farnsworth Invention, which we're doing right now, it's very kind of a stylized realism because not, although we're, we're acting off based off of real people, we have to you know, there are certain concepts that we have to ignore. Like, we have to ignore that there's this man on stage talking yeah, this entire yeah. time. We have to ignore him. And you have to make it, you have to up the stakes enough for it to be theatrical. And uh, from up here, which is the play about the student brings a gun to school, that is a strictly realism play. Completely. So, situation, yeah. yeah, a big acting challenge, I find, are doing realism plays because it's very difficult to try to get yourself in the mindset of something that's so uh, so similar to yourself. Oh, well, that's great. I'm going to have to cut you off here, but we're going to have to continue talking about this later. Right now, we're going to have to take a look at some of the perfect pets that need to be adopted at La Crosse's Humane Society. So first up today on Perfect Pets, we have two brothers, Copper and Carter. They're both only a few months old, 
but they're very sweet and lovable and very playful and are looking for a nice home that will take care of the both of them. And here we have Oreo. He's a year and a half old, old Border Collie, very high energy, it's sweet and lovable, but he needs lots of space in order to run around in and, and stave off some of that high energy. And here we have Bailey. He's a six-year-old Puggle, Pug Beagle mix, very curious, very sweet, loves to please people, and would love to get a little bit of exercise to shed just a few extra pounds off his body. More about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Again, the phone number for the Cooley Region Humane Society is 781-4014. The UWL football team and first-year head coach Joe Detweiler faced a bitter rival this past Saturday against the Blue Goals' Vaux Claire at the newly renovated Roger Herring Stadium at Veterans Memorial Field. But, unfortunately for the Eagles, it ended in a hard-fought 21-31 loss the Eagles dropped to 1-2 and two in the WIC Conference and 2-4 and four overall. However, it was a close one throughout the whole game. The score was tied at halftime, but the Eau Claire offense attack was too powerful in the second half despite the losing effort. The Eagles were led by a very effective rushing attack from sophomore running back Ben Hurtranf. He definitely put a hurt on the Blue Goals defense with some jaw-dropping plays trampling through the Blue Goals defense. 22 times for an eye-popping 206 yards, a near 10 yards per rush. He also hit pay dirt for all of the three Eagles touchdowns. As a coach, I'd totally feed that guy the ball as many times as I could because 10 yards of carry would average, well, a first down just about every play. Another player to note is Eagles linebacker John Rozak, who performed beastly by leading the UWL defense with 16 tackles. A main reason why the UW Eagles could not score more is because of time of possession for the Eagles offense. The Eagles offense was only on the field for about 20 minutes of the game. That's almost about as half as much time possession as Eau Claire had. UWL Eagles will be striking back this next Saturday as they attempt to capture their first road victory when they play an evening game up north Saturday under the lights in Menominee. Kickoff starts at 6. In other news, uh, the UWL soccer team has been on fire the last three games by going undefeated. They also have not given up one single goal in those three games. That's nothing new, though, for UWL senior Goalkeeper Sagan Pizengrilly, she has held opponents without a goal in 8 out of 14 total games this season. This last Saturday night, the Eagles eked out another shutout by winning 1-0 over UW River Falls. Freshman forward Kirsten Anderson kicked the winning goal for the Eagles, putting their record of 4-1-1 in conference play and 9-4-1 overall. Their next action will be against the University of St. Thomas Wednesday evening at 7. Keep those balls out of the nets, ladies. In cross-country news, the Eagles are ranked number 16th in the NCAA Division III polls. Last Saturday, the UWL Eagles finished first overall at the annual Jim Drew's Invitational at Mabel Grove Golf Course. UWL's top finisher in the race was junior Mark Poonzenberger. He finished with an eighth place for the Eagles on a grilling 8,000-meter course. Uh, other Eagles runners were junior Josh Call on 18th, Freshman Nate Ruthier in 23rd, sophomore Jacob Peterson in 25th, and another sophomore Carlton Foster finished in 27th. The men's cross-country team hits the road to Luther in Iowa tomorrow. Race starts tomorrow evening at 5. Good luck, guys, and keep UWL the dominating sports force it has always been known for. And that's, just, that's all for sports. Yeah, uh, yeah UWL, UWL keeps doing good. Hopefully the football team will do something this weekend. Uh, I know there's a Packer game going on oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. against a bitter rival. Uh, we usually beat Minnesota in the Dome with Rodgers, so hopefully that will all work out. So. All right, absolutely. Okay, well, thanks for watching WMCM's Week in Review this week. Make sure to join us next week, Thursday at 4.30, right here on Campus Channel 6, Charter, Charter Channel 96, and Digital Cable Channel 989. Thanks. <laughs>